My research scientist is Elizabeth Gold. I was unable to find information on her early life, but I can presume that she has always had a love for science as her passion for science is evident in her research. This leads me to assume that she was eager to be involved in science and then focused on graduating as a science major. In 1988, she received a PhD from UCLA in behavioral neuroscience. Elizabeth is currently in the Department of Psychology and the Princeton Neuroscience Institute at Princeton University. In 1989, she joined a lab at Rockefeller University as a postdoctoral researcher investigating the effect of stress hormones on rat brains. Gold's research focused on the death of cells in the hippocampus. While Gold was documenting the degeneration of these brains, she discovered evidence that pointed to the idea that the brain might also heal itself. An interesting hobby she has is her writing ability. She was a co-author of two books in psychology titled Psychology Around Us and Psychology. This is interesting to me because she was able to utilize the vast amount of connections between neuroscience and psychology in the works. Her current laboratory is studying the mammalian adult brain structural plasticity. They are focused on the identification of stimuli that leads to changes in the shape, size, and number of components of the brain, such as neurons and astrocytes. The main goal of the work is to discover how changes in the brain structure impact anxiety regulation and cognition. This also connects to the focus on the identification of what increases cell survival and plasticity in the development of the brain. The most recent paper is titled The Effects of Living in an Outdoor Enclosure on Hippocampal Plasticity and Anxiety-Like Behavior in Response to Nematode Infection. Environmental stimuli and stress impact adult neurogenesis. Therefore, mice living in an outdoor enclosure were compared to mice in standard laboratory conditions. The lab infected the mice with parasitic worms and observed effects on neurogenesis and hippocampal function. There were lots of techniques that were used to limit confounding variables, such as identification techniques, random assignment, enclosure characteristics, and behavioral testing. The hippocampus-dependent object location tests and an open field apparatus were used to test the mice for cognitive behavior and behavioral anxiety. After being properly euthanized and extracted, the mice brains were sectioned, rinsed, incubated, and immunolabeled. labeled. Sections were then washed, dried, and stained, and placed on slides. Then using a BX60 microscope, the cell densities were determined by taking the total number of positively labeled cells and dividing it by the volume of the cell layer. A variety of statistical analysis tests were used to determine significance and correlation between cognitive behavior and anxiety-like behavior. For example, the data sets were then examined using Levine's test for a normal distribution and histological data were analyzed with two-way analogs. The thing I admire most about Elizabeth Gold is her curiosity and determination. Her first experience as a postdoctoral researcher had an outcome that contradicted the widely popular theory at the time. Despite this unexpected result, she was determined to further understand its meaning. This cutting-edge discovery reminds me of Mendel's research and how his discovery of the principles of inheritance contradicted the ideas that were popular at the time. Elizabeth was able to overcome this obstacle and stand behind her research and discovery. Even when those before her said she was wrong, she persisted. She decided to change the focus of her research to how neurons regrow. After eight years of gathering data, she was able to support her hypothesis. She observed evidence that the brains had the capability to create new neurons to heal itself. This process is defined as neurogenesis. This finding contradicts the widely accepted conclusion from research in the early 1980s that there was no formation of new neurons in adult primate brains. Leading scientists theorized that brain cells were unlike other cells in the body and did not divide. Therefore, there was an understanding that after childhood, the brain did not gain neurons. Due to Gold's research, many neuroscientists had a new view of the brain. Gold was determined despite the theory and showed that surroundings affect the brain's mechanisms by setting the impact of chronic stress on rats and primates' brains. Her research led to a great discovery and allowed for further research with neurogenesis that has great social implications. I relate to Elizabeth because she is a strong female scientist that I can look up to. I am able to relate to her especially since she is a behavioral neuroscientist and her research is centered on neuroscience, and I am a neuroscience major. I can also connect to her passion and curiosity in the field as there are great social implications with the discoveries of her research. I can follow her example and always push for what I believe in. Anxiety regulation is a huge problem that more and more people face every day. Her research could lead to a greater understanding of how to treat this disorder. I hope that in the future I will be able to have a similar contribution to neurological research. This would allow me to be a part of helping others through a greater understanding of the impacts of changes in the brain. The general acceptance of the concept of neurogenesis in adult mammals almost 40 years after its suggestion is a great victory. 
This phenomenon may be the key to understanding and even treatment of depression, Alzheimer's disease, and schizophrenia. Therefore, the next steps involve using her research and understanding of the mechanisms of the adult mammalian brain to create or further develop treatments for changes in brain structure that impact important factors such as anxiety regulation and cognition.